Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's your boy, Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And my dear friends, we have yet another amazing guest to um, continue this amazing run that we're on of, uh, of uh, amazing Wake Up Legendary guests, truly legendary human beings um, who are uh, coming on to our show and sharing their wisdom, their experience, and their journey even though most of them are extremely early in their journey. As you know, if you follow the show for any amount of time, this show interviews our actual students who've gone through our curriculum here at Legendary Marketer and, uh, and brings them on to talk about their experience, not only with our actual programs, but also how they've implemented those strategies, skill sets, frameworks, techniques in the real world to actually get results. And we have over now 820 episodes of these wonderful, amazing human beings. And this morning, my friends, is no different. Waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning to join us all the way from Hawaii is a homeschooling mom named Nicolina. And with that being said, let's hear her story. Nicolina, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi. Thanks for having me. I am like, I still am trying to wake up a bit, but um, I think when you got, gave me the email, I was like, Dave got hacked. Like he didn't mean to send that to me. I'm too early on. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it's 4 a.m. I'm in Hawaii, so I'm kind of tired. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. All I good. All only good. once. Only gone live once so far. Okay, so this is a very brand new experience, and I'm glad that you mentioned that right up front, so everybody knows that this is not a normal. This is going live is not a normal thing for you. So, how are you feeling right now? I am stoked and also tired. <laughs> I was like, gotcha. okay, I'm a mom. I can do tired. Um, yeah. But yeah, right. I'm still a little bit in shock. I don't know. I think when I like found this I just was so surprised I'm like wait oh okay um yeah do you want to hear like my backstory yeah please tell us how you found us how you found you know (laughs) what you were looking for yeah we um my husband is like my husband's Canadian and we've married almost eight years so we're like a first immigrant family which I didn't really think about it as much but it really does impact our life a lot Um, And so like for seven out of eight of the years, we've only been on one income because one of us wasn't allowed to work because of like immigration, you know? So we have just been paycheck to paycheck for a long time or broke or like beyond poor. (laughs) Um, And just trying to get over all of those hurdles. And we had kids early on. So we just had a lot of big hurdles that we had to get through. And the first two years, I wasn't allowed to work because we were in Canada and I was immigrating there. And then we were like, this is impossible to live here. This is not going to work. And then we moved back to Hawaii where we met. Of course, we live in the two most expensive places in all of North America, whatever. Um, and so we were like, my husband couldn't work. We moved back. So, But I was pregnant and had a one-year-old. So I'm like, okay, what can I do to be able to have my kids and bring in an income? So I... Um, started a business with, I did a calligraphy business, so I did it from home. I was like, hey, this is what I can do. This is my tool. I'll do it. But I did like everything, like built my website, branding, all of it, like all from scratch. And, um, and it was good, but it wasn't, it took a long time to like build, you know? So it wasn't like paying a huge amount of our bills. It was just like barely getting us by. Um, Mm. and then we started growing, which is good. And then COVID happened. So we were doing okay, and then COVID happened, and my husband, two days before everything locked down, he got his work permit, so he was actually able to work, and then right when COVID happened, all of our weddings got canceled, so we did a lot of, like, luxury weddings, like signage Mm -hmm. and stuff for them, and those were our big ticket items, and they all canceled, so we were like, okay, back to one income, but, like, my husband was actually able to work during COVID, which was awesome, Um, but... So we still kind of struggled. Uh, Actually, no, that year we did pretty good. That was probably the best year because we actually had like a legit job for once. Um, And then, so then after COVID kind of started, like the regulations started lifting, we were able to do more weddings. So we had one, that one year where he was working and I was working, but we had two little babies under 
two or two under three or something. So I still was like a single mom, mom and working. And so we would do stuff like at nap times, at you know, at nighttime, whatever. And then I was pregnant, my third. And I remember I was like eight months pregnant. <laughs> I was like bending over this like six foot um, seating chart at like one in the morning. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, this is not sustainable. This is not gonna work. So I like put that down. I was like, I can't do this with three kids. So I put it down and we like felt the call to homeschool, um, which for a lot of reasons, but I was like, I'm just going to do the homeschool thing, figure it out, whatever. And actually that year, last year we did, we did pretty good. It was best year yet, but then inflation happened. I live in Hawaii and it's like our rent went up and everything went up and we're like, man, this is still so tight. We just felt like no matter how hard we were, we just couldn't get ahead. So mm. I was like, you know what? Like I got to find something. So in January of this year, I did all of it. I looked at every side hustle, everything, you name it, like surveys mm. and VA, everything. I like applied for, looked for. Um, I tried to take my business before, which I had an online shop that sold physical products. So I turned stuff digital and I was like, maybe that'll work. But I didn't understand marketing. So like it didn't work. It's like, <laughs> so anyway, then I guess um, affiliate marketing. I never even heard of legendary. And then I was like, I wasn't really skeptical because I was already trying everything. So I was just like, $7, whatever, let's see. And so I jumped in day one. I was like, oh my God, Dave, where has this been my whole life? <laughs> this could have helped me for years. So like in my business, I was like, oh my gosh, what what have I done? Um, so yeah, I was like sold. I was like, this is brilliant. Yes, sign me up. And so that was kind of how I got into it. Nice, nice. And what, tell, remind me when that was exactly. I think I took the course in April. It took me a while because I was in Hawaii. So like the time zone, I, I think it was like April to May. Okay. I think maybe I, I launched in May and I took it. So we're all probably wondering at this point, you you said you have three kids. I would assume they're, they're young because I think you said that you were pregnant in either 2021 or 2022. <laughs> so talk to us how you found the time. How did you find the time in the beginning when you were going through the challenge in the very early parts back in April? And also how has your time management skills and productivity evolved over the last four to five months? Okay, so I started getting up at five in the morning to get up before my kids because I'm just a crazy person if I don't. So I've been getting up at five to like, you know, prepare my mind, read my Bible, just like get ready for the day, prepare lessons, whatever. Um, and so I kind of already carved out that time for me. So it was kind of easy to plug that in. So I would do like before they would wake up, I would do it like um, during nap times. So I have a six, four and almost two year old. So um, my older kids don't nap, but they would like watch a show or have quiet time. And I would do it then or doing laundry or doing the dishes um, or at nighttime. Like I just like found my little cracks and I would just chip away at it um, mm. as I could. Um, and so, cause I don't, because I homeschool too, like my kids aren't in schools, so I don't have huge chunks of time. So yeah. I just had to chip away at everything. Like, and I still do that now. Like I kind of do that same rhythm. Like I just chip away like I can. So that mm. was definitely, it's totally doable. That's where I'm like, no guys, it's literally so doable. Yeah. <coughs> and Jessica Churchill says mom cracks of life. That's where we find the time. And uh, thanks for that, that comment, Jessica, because um, I, I, I believe you, and um, there are there are certain people. Uh, absolutely, moms are 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 um, a large part of the group of people who can manage multiple things at one time. You have three small children. You're homeschooling. If you can do it, I would think that anybody can do it, right? Because uh, there, you know, I have two small children, two and seven. And they demand when I'm when when I'm when I'm with them 100 percent of my attention and focus. And I know exactly what you're talking about, about one napping, one not. 
but being able to set the, the other one down with some sort of a quiet activity and, and kind of be able to either take a nap myself, get some work done, whatever the case may be, depending on how I'm feeling or what I need to do. And so what does a day look like now that you're creating content and actually marketing? Talk to us about how you create content and what was it like for you? You said this is your second time going live. I guess back, back us up before we get into your your um, your your kind of time management or or answer both questions at one time. What does it look like for you now to actually create marketing content? And what was it like for you to begin to get on video? Was that an adjustment? And how did you either overcome whatever limiting beliefs you had, or how did you? What did the first few videos feel like compared to now? Dang, sorry, keeps breaking up. Um, I yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> curveball. I never even made a reel before this. So I feel like I had a steep learning curve in that way. Um, and even, you know, just getting used to yourself on camera is weird. Like, you know, just hearing your voice and seeing, oh, and I look like that. And I didn't know that was there. Um, so that's definitely a fun learning curve that we all just have to do. Um, I always tell people, like, they want to do faceless. I'm like, we all have to go that. Like, get over your insecurities. Like, you all have to. Just do it. Um, anyway, so my day-to-day, -day, because I'm in Hawaii, time zones are just – I think it took me probably six weeks to even figure out time zones of when's a good time to post, when does this work, um, because it's just so different. So I try to have a reel out by seven before my kids are up, um, just because of the time zone. Like, I think the best time for me to post is like 3 a.m. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. So I just had to figure out what's going to work for me. I think that's the biggest key is you just have to make it work for you, because if not, it's not going to work. So I try to get a reel out by seven. Um, and then I have like one ready to go, uh, or like half edited or something. And then I post another one around like, um, 10 or 11. And then I like wait until nap time and I'll do maybe a longer one or one more intensive one or batch a couple of them. And then I'll get one out by like 3 PM. So, and then I'm done for the day. Like, so that's kind of nice. I just have that like in my rhythms. Um, but I don't have huge chunks to be able to batch. Like I kind of want to, I want to be like, Oh, I want to batch all of these and just be done. But like, that just doesn't work for me. So I just have to chip away. Like, you know, go to the bathroom while we edit a caption or like whatever, have an idea. I'll write it down. Um, I go on morning walks. and like, if I have anything, I'll write it down then. I'm like, Oh, or maybe the night before I'll think of my three, like specific things I want to hit the next day. And then, or if I have a random idea, um, so yeah, that's, it's very like not chip awayable, but like have to chip away. That's just the only way to do it. Yeah. So in your questionnaire, when we sent, when we invited you onto the show and we sent you a couple of questions, you said that you've always been entrepreneurial, but you've never known how to properly market or sustainably scale any of your businesses. You really believe those two factors paired with old poverty mindsets held you back in all of your other endeavors going through the course, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, working on your mindset, being in a community of like-minded people have been game changers. Talk to us a little bit about what the, um, the old poverty mindset and these pieces that you were alluding to in, in that, what they mean for you so others may be able to relate and you know, gain some self-awareness around if that may be holding them back as well. Totally. So I came from like very poor, like trailer park. I'm originally from Georgia, like very poor. Um, and everyone was like, you know, drug addicts, like gambling. I mean, all the things like that was like very broken home. Not, I mean, I think everyone was drowning in debt and struggling. Like, so I just didn't even realize how much of that I took in until I started going to college. And I was like, whoa, okay. Like, I did not realize this. And then I got into debt myself and I was like, man, dang. So my husband came from their family as an immigrant family, but so they like kind of have poverty stuff, but they're more like middle class. So like he didn't grow up as like I did, like he never had debt. He like, you know, his parents helped him a lot. Um, and so when we got married, he was like, we're going to get rid of debt. We're going to get you out of this. And I'm like, I've never lived without debt. What do you mean? Like, what's that? And so anyway, so it was just this journey of us being married, trying to work through all those things and like, deal with spending habits and deal with mindsets just even then 
Um, and then we have, we worked really hard. Like, like I said, we paycheck to paycheck, but we can't, we paid off every single one of our debts. All of our cars are paid off except for my student loans. I have a few left on my student loans. Um, so anyway, so that was like, that was a huge lot of mindset things. And I thought, man, I'm good. Like I've done the work. I've gone to counseling, <laughs> like done a lot of work over the years to like get out of the brokenness. And mm. when I started going through this, I was like, I think I talked to my advisor and she had like a questionnaire that was like, would you like to make like ten thousand dollars more, twenty thousand, fifty thousand more a month? And I was like, in my head, I'm like, if I make a thousand dollars more, that's gonna be game changing. Like, I was like, so ten thousand, that would be like a huge goal. So I'm just gonna say twenty thousand. Like, that seems crazy to me. Right. And she was, she was like, um, I just need to be a mama bear. Like, you can do better than that. That's too low. And I was like, what? What do you mean? Like, <laughs> this is a shock. And I think that was when it hit me. Like, oh, like I really do have limiting mindsets. Like, I need to deal with this. So, um, I had a lot of time between my advisor calls, so it kind of spaced out my thing. So I like devoured rich dad, poor dad. And I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. Like where my family would say, what my husband's family would say, like where I want to be, like, I got to work through that. Um, and so that was like, seriously, just so really, cause when you don't, when no one's taught you your whole life, you don't know, like you just don't know. And I say this on my stuff, like I'm a first generational bright um, cycle breaker. And so like, I have to learn a lot of things and I have to give myself to that. And it's so important because you can't go anywhere without it. Hats. I, I'm switching hats on you on that one. Yeah. And so it's like, it's, and even like my other business, I, I mean, I did everything. I built my website. I did everything myself. Um, but then I was wearing so many hats. It wasn't sustainable. And we were actually getting pretty good. There's only like three main calligraphers in all of Hawaii. So like, we, we got on the four seasons list. So that was like a dream of mine, but it just wasn't sustainable. So like, I didn't know how to market. I didn't even know how to use social media to profit. It was all based on connections. Like Hawaii is very connection relation oriented too. So like when you got an in, like you're good. So that was my only form of marketing. And the only thing I saw online, honestly, were like MLMs that were marketing. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do like It just seems, ugh, I don't want to do that. So I didn't know there was another way. And so when I started learning about everything that you guys talk about, I was like, holy cow, this is like all the places I would hit roadblocks that I didn't know how to get through. So I'm so thankful. <laughs> like I said, I wish I knew this years ago. It would have saved me so much time, so much time. So anyway, I'm so thankful. I'm like, thank God someone's teaching about marketing and scaling because I had no idea. And you realize a little bit that scaling your business is much about your mindset and what you believe is even possible. And you've sort of communicated that really powerfully for us this morning, just now, in the fact that in setting goals, you would have settled and been happy and a thousand extra dollars a month would be game changing for you. Yes, it would. And what about another 19,000? You know, what about another 9,000? What about another 39,000? And it's almost difficult to wrap your head around that at the very beginning. And I think it's important to set realistic goals. Like, you know, saying I, I'm going to make a million dollars a month right out of the gate is, is it may be unrealistic, but also challenging yourself to set a goal that makes you a little bit uncomfortable strive for something because when you do the whole point is is to believe that that is possible for you and even more so begin to act like you're already there because if you act like you're already there act as if and i like that much better than fake it till you make it because the word fake comes off as yucky but acting as if acting as if I'm already a millionaire. How would I talk? How would I walk? How would I, in response to a price at a restaurant, would I, you know, throw my hands up and go, oh, this is ridiculous. These prices are so, you know, and complain to the waitress and start, you know, talking about inflation or, you know, around my friends. Would I, if I was a millionaire, would I, would I, would I still welcome the same conversations about the price of gas? Would I still be interested in the same conversations about the government or who's the president in the sort of commiserating that we do 
in our jobs around the water cooler. Would I still welcome that? Would, would that still be the things that I wanted to spend my time talking about if I was a millionaire and I had twenty or thirty thousand dollars a month, you know, flowing into my bank account? Would I want to sit with people and hang out with people who were complaining about life in the fact that they can't afford things in the fact that who who's ever said this or heard somebody say this must be nice, right? As if somebody was just handed or, you know, was, was just um, given a handout of a big house or a nice car, right? Would you still tolerate those same kind of conversations if you were a millionaire or if you were acting as if you were already a millionaire, would you same still tolerate those same kind of conversations? And I think the question for a lot of us is probably not. However, I don't know what I would talk about because I'm so used to being in this. So talk yeah. to me about how your conversations have changed, how the people that you're attracted to has changed, how you're friend circle or maybe boundaries that you're setting with certain friends or family has evolved over the course of the last four months? Dude, that is, that's a crazy question because, so we live in Kona, but we have a lot of missionary rivals. We were missionaries for a little bit and a lot of people in serious poverty mindsets. And it's so interesting because I can tell, I'll say something like, like I'll drive past at empty buildings. A lot of stuff has closed down since COVID. It's been really, it, the economy here is, it's been very difficult. And a lot of people, we call it being priced out of paradise. People are leaving mm. every day. You can't afford, I mean, it'll be like a shack for like $2,500 a month. And you're like, that's an actual shack. Like, I don't like, this is crazy. Um, so anyway, and, um, so I'll be like driving past, um, an abandoned business. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, we could bake, we could do a trampoline park there like dude let's look at how much is that gonna cost I'm like oh it's just a million dollars we can totally and they're like what and I'm like whoa that's why I can really tell that it's shifted because I'm not just thinking about myself I'm thinking about the community I'm thinking about other people like we go out to dinner Dave I used to always pick I didn't realize I did this I would pick the cheapest thing on the menu because I'm like oh we don't have that much money right and I'm like oh get the appetizers like whatever it's fine and then like my husband's even like well, you're not in the poverty spirit anymore. Like, like, can you dial it back a little bit? Because I'm like, oh, like 30%. Let's just tip big. Like, I love that. Let's do it. And he's like, Where did, where'd you go? And I'll be like, yeah, like, when do we start making like 50000 And he's like, what? Like, what did you do with my wife? Um, so it's super awesome. He's like the most supportive ever. And I love it. And he's like, let's go. Like, this is awesome. But a lot of people, like even I've had a conversation with pe multiple people here because food stamps are so awesome and like you get a lot of money and low income housing, like a lot of people live in low income housing here, even though they're making good money, like it's just, you can't afford anything. They'll be like, yeah, I don't really want to make more because like, I don't want to lose my benefits. And I was like, are you serious? Like that is such a poverty thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what do you mean? But the more you make, the more you have, like what? Like, so I can tell, I kind of hit like, blocks of people and it's okay i just have to realize they're on their own journey too and like not let it get to me and just be like well i'm just gonna do me and like i'm gonna work on my mindsets and even if i'm in a conversation i realize i have like an old thought pattern i'm like whoa i need to deal with that right now so that's kind mm. of how i've gone about it but i yeah. can definitely see a huge shift and i yeah it's just i think you don't when you don't know what's possible you don't even know you can dream all day long about winning a lottery and this and the other but if you don't actually know what to do or how to do it i think that's what like limits people and that's where i was like dude this is doable oh my gosh this is how like this is how we can do it so i think that yeah. changed a lot too yeah and there's thank you for sharing all this this is so honest and vulnerable and and it's your journey and it's it's so it's a beautiful process because you're coming into this place where you are going, you are thinking more abundantly, you are taking risks. And with the, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. No risk, no reward. And that's one of the things that a lot of us don't realize. There's some, you know, interesting comments in the comments and some, of course, powerful, vulnerable sharing that's happening uh, in the comments as we're discussing these topics. And, you know, many people um, they, they, uh, you know, they, they, uh, you know, 
buying something for themselves, investing in upgrading their skill sets in order to make money, if it, you know, in order to make more money, if it costs to do that, it's like, oh, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't. And it's almost, it almost can, can for some of us be a self-worth thing. Like I am happy to buy things, materialistic things. I'm happy to, um, you know, I'm happy to, um, you know, of course, buy a, uh, take out a loan, um, buy a house, you know, because I'm, 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 um, doing something for my kids or whatever, or I'm going to buy a new outfit, or I want to go on a vacation so I can relax and get away from it all, or I'm going to spend $1,500 on a new iPhone or whatever it is. But when it comes time to buying something for me to make me more valuable, to make me more intelligent, to make me a more high value person so I can make more money through the skills that I'm learning, I, I, a lot of us can tend to be real hesitant. And sometimes it can be from a lack of belief in ourselves that we can do it or that we're worthy of, of, of investing. Because again, as you mentioned earlier in the show, a lot of us were taught very early on that, you know, people from our family don't do things like that. You know, we're drug addicts. We're, we're good old boys and girls. We're from the trailer parks. We're from this, we're from that. You know, you believe what you see, you know, and I, I had the same thing. I grew up around my father struggled financially his whole life. He was a construction worker, drove a dusty old car. Um, and, and I was I was on my way to follow in his footsteps. Now, he's a be wonderful, beautiful man, but he also was taught poverty principles in his childhood and and had a lot of alcoholism and trauma and drama in his tr childhood that taught him those same poverty principles as an adult. And so, you know, one of the best things that I ever did, which was, of course, a huge sin when I was doing it, was drop out of school. I dropped out of high school in ninth grade and didn't go to college. And I was on the streets. I did become an addict. I, I was homeless. And part of that was very traumatic and dramatic for me. However, what I did learn to do was hustle. What I did learn to do was take risk. What I did learn to do was to, um, you know, uh, you know, work hard, you know, and, and develop those, those, you know, if I didn't do something hustle, I didn't eat. And so when I got clean at 24, you know, I had a lot of those survival skills that I had developed and I, I didn't spend eight years in high school and college listening to all the limiting beliefs being projected onto me, preparing me to be a factory worker, you know, to get a job. And so um, I, I just appreciate the fact that you shared about your childhood and then you're sharing now even about it, how in your own community, even as somebody who's, it sounds like you are involved in your community, you care about your community, at the same time, that doesn't mean that you need to believe the same things that they believe. It doesn't mean that you need to come down to their thinking so you can fit in. As a matter of fact, if you live in a poverty stricken area or you live in an area where a lot of people are struggling, same thing if you're a, a part of a church or you want to do missionary work, or you want to serve other people in any capacity, the best thing that you can do is learn how to make more money because unfortunately in this world without money, without resources, you can't do much. You can't help people. You know, and one of the best things that I've ever gotten from learning and developing these skills is the ability to be able to do things for other people, i.e. my father, my mother, I'm looking at condos right now to get my mother a place. And, 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 and so her and my stepfather don't have to worry about, uh, you know, where they're going to live and how they're going to live. And they've been actually jumping around. They sold their home many years ago and downsized to an RV and have been living in RV parks, you know, um, high end trailer parks for, 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 for several years. And so you know, it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to realize that I can't help anybody else until I help myself. And so 
what are some of your goals that you have or some of the people that you want to help or some of the things that you want to do? It could be right within your family. It could be within your community. But what what are some of the things that you're either already able to do or are looking forward to being able to do in terms of service to others as a result of more money from taking these risks yourself? Um, man, it's just so wild. Cause I think I've just dreamed of always being able to do these things, but I just haven't known how or have the means. So I just like, Oh, it's never going to happen or whatever. And, um, it, even going back to like, when I decided my business name, I was like the wealthy mama, like we're not wealthy right now. Like, why am I picking this? And I really felt like it was almost like a declaration of like, no, I am going to come, I'm becoming wealthy and it's not just what's in your bank account like you can have all the money in the world and you can still be a scrooge like you can have all these things and still like freak out if you waste food like just things like that that i'm like wealth really is a mindset first and foremost because if you don't change that you're gonna like money what does it say like money is just an indicator of like what's already going on inside of you so like money just shows you where your heart's at it just shows you where your mind's at it's not make you wealthy or make you something so for me i've really gone after those mindsets first i'm like man when i do get that money i want to be a good steward i want to be generous i want to be like you know buy somebody a car go pay off somebody else's debt like I work so hard. Like I want to pay someone else's debt. I want to go and like maybe tip a thousand dollars at a restaurant because I know this mom is struggling. Like, Oh, I cannot wait. And even just like, I don't know, just anything helping my family where, I mean, my, most of my family is not around, but you know, if my family needs it or a friend is like in need, just to be able to, or not even just in need, like how do I bless others in, in any way? Like we've honestly, Dave, it's been a crazy journey here. And I mean, I believe Jesus and like, he like, has asked us to do crazy things. Like we gave away our van last year. Like we had just paid it off like 15 grand and he was like, give it away. We were like, okay. Like we didn't have money in savings. We didn't have anything to buy a new car. And we were like, okay. And we did it and it was wild. And people were like, what are you doing? I'm like, I just, I want to be generous when I have nothing. So when I have enough, like when I have more than enough, I will still be generous. Like, you know, if I can, if I'm stingy with a little, I'll be stingy with a lot. I don't want to do that. So it's been this process of that. And yeah, I'm just like, I can't wait. I'm like, I want to buy businesses. I want to start stuff like in the community, see the needs and like fill the needs, fix, like bring solutions to problems for like a city level, state level. I'm like, that's like, oh, I can't wait. Anyway. Wow. That, good, but... That's just a hat thrower right there. I mean, you know, come on. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that people. I yeah. mean, we've got 485 people here listening and um, just your, your, your energy and your mindset. And obviously you, you weren't born with this mindset. You've worked so diligently on it. And you're also, you're also listening to your spirit and, and messages that God is telling you, um, to, to, uh, how to live your life. And, um, I really truly believe that, uh, you know, what we put out is what we get back. And, you know, we can be both generous with our, with our, with our materialistic items, as you said, giving away a car. Oh my God, your van. I mean, you, you know, you just said you just paid it off. Holy smokes. And I'm sure that's an amazing story that the details, but just giving us that much is really, um, really says a lot about, you know, who you are as a person and who your family is. And um, I just I can't I can't wait to see what impact you have on um, people and and um, your audience and people in your community as you begin to become more successful and attract more resources into your um, into your life, you know, and have more resources to be able to use to do the things that you want to do. Um, in the ways that you want to be of service, both to your children and, and your family, but also to obviously those around you. Um, what have you learned about yourself through this journey, Nicolina, that, that you either had forgotten existed within you or that you've learned anew about yourself and are pleasantly surprised and maybe fired up or humbled about? T talk to us about that. Um, 
Um, okay, I think something I didn't know was always inside of me. So when I, I run multiple businesses, I've tried like different things. I feel like I, I'm a really good risk taker. Like if even it fails, I don't care, I'd rather try. And I've definitely had things totally flop and fail and that's okay. Um, but people would always come to me for business advice. Like I feel like I've always like had a business mindset or like entrepreneurial or help people pivot or help people. I actually did this like three week, like a shark tank thing. I don't know. Anyway, this guy, the guy who um, created the, oh my gosh, what's the stadium? It's like a really intense stadium. He like came up with the idea for it. I'm totally blanking right now. Anyway, anyway, so he did this like shark tank thing and I was like, and in that like, oh my gosh, I was like, I am created for business. Like I know that I am, but my mindset's, you know, kept me back. So anyway, so when I was doing this, I realized I'm like, man, when, when I was going through my business plan and trying to write out the fishing formula and everything, I'm trying to figure out what do I want to do? Like, I don't know. Well, how would this fit in? What do I want? I'm like, well, I actually really love business. So like, I'll go with the wealth niche. Um, and wow, my brain just stopped. Hold on. <laughs> oh, business up. So I realized I'm like, man, going back, people would always come to me and ask me for business advice. Hey, can you help me with this? What would you do in this situation? What's another idea? And I loved it. I would just do it for free. I would just like hang out with people and help them with their business. Like one girl I met with, she made 200 grand after I like had time for her, helped her with her website and like designed it for her. She made that much that next year. And I was like, dang, I really do like, you know, and I've helped a lot of small businesses here. And then I was like, man, why didn't I do this for me? <laughs> you know? And I realized, man, I want to help other people build their businesses so they can actually do what's inside of them to be who they're supposed to be. Cause it's so free when you can do that. And I just, so I just love helping people. And that's where I kind of, I'm thinking long game. Like I'm not just, doing this now. I think some people get in it. They want to make quick money. I'm like, no, no, you got to think long game. Like, where are you going to go? What do you actually want to do? Um, and how do you actually want to help people? Or like, you know, that even if you're not promoting the products you're promoting right now, if you had lost that, would you still be doing the same thing? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so for me, I was like, I want to help people build their businesses and do like one-on-one -on -one coaching, all these things. So that's kind of like where I'm starting, but I'm starting really small. Like I'm still building, I'm still chipping away. I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm, I know the process. Right. And that's, mm -hmm. so even people ask me stuff like in my DMs, they'll like ask me about their business has nothing to do with affiliate marketing. Nothing. I still help them. Cause I'm like, that's really what I want to do. And yeah. I think it's like building trust with people because I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to help you. Like, I'm not going to just leave you high and dry. I'll, I'll give you my two cents, do what you want with it. Like, you know, whatever. And people are like, wow, that's so helpful. Thank you. I'm like, yeah, totally. Cause that's what I want to do. Right. So yeah. I, that cool. surprised me. I, that really surprised me. Yeah. And you're finding that you're good at that and that you have that sort of talent that it's not just something that you want to do, but you actually, yeah. and, and friends, we don't get good at that just because we were born good at that. Surely some of us have natural God given talents to be able to, you know, um, communicate or whatever. We all have strengths, but a lot of these skill sets of working with others is a developed talent. It is not something that we just have that you either have or you don't. For me, making people feel comfortable. Um, a lot of working and coaching people is a combination of telling the truth combined with care -frontation not confrontation where I'm, you know, getting in somebody's face and being mean and making them feel shameful. But telling the truth is if I'm going to be a coach, or if I'm going to be a mentor, if I'm going to give somebody, uh, you know, if somebody's going to trust me with advice, I need to be courageous enough to tell the truth. I need to say what I mean, mean what I say, but not be mean when I say it. Mm -hmm. And I need to be also willing to care front somebody. So confront in a caring way somebody if I see them doing something that I feel is not in their best interest. If I can, based on my experience, not my opinions, but my experience, if I can say, hey, I've been there before. I know what you're going through. I This is what happened for me, or this is what happened for a friend. Let me tell you his experience or a previous client. Let me share their experience with you. As we work with more people, not only we get to share our experience, but we get to share other clients' experience as well. And we, we can still even protect their confidentiality if we need to. 
Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you are recognizing that within yourself. And you're also realizing that part of that becoming a great coach or consultant or mentor to people is also about investing in yourself in being a student as well. You know, um, it's, it's so important for us to upgrade our knowledge. And one of the things that I said yesterday on Wake Up Legendary was that, you know, any niche that you want to go into, literally any niche, you can become more knowledgeable than 99% of people that are in that particular niche who have a problem looking for a solution by just doing some research and by maybe going through a course yourself or doing some research, talking to some people who have had that challenge and have overcome it, or, you know, just by trying it yourself. You know, people go through our 15-day challenge and sometimes they go through our, our more flagship programs as well. And then they go start implementing. And even after doing it for a month or two, you have more experience with digital marketing than 99% of people on the planet. And yet, you know, say you want to go into the niche of now your passion about digital marketing and you want to talk about that on your social media profiles and promote products. Well, you may think you don't have enough value to offer and you may discredit yourself, but the truth is, is that if you've spent a couple of weeks or a couple of months learning and then a, a month or so implementing and trying and you know more than 99% of, of, of the people on this planet know about digital marketing and you actually are qualified to begin to deliver value. Um, let me ask, do you agree with that? And, and what comes up for you as I... It's like wild. It's so wild because first of all, if you want to do this at all, you got to forever be teachable. Like the algorithms are going to kick your butt left, right, and center. Like you got to figure out how to, you know, like you got to figure it out. And so even like the last probably two or a month and a half, I really gave myself to learning like the algorithm, learning Instagram, because I didn't know any of it, you know? and whatever and it's funny because i grew a bit not like crazy growth but like you know growth and people are already asking me like hey can you help me create content you know and i'm like <laughs> i'm like uh i am not at like three hundred thousand followers like well, i'm not that you know in my mind i'd be like i'm not what are you talking about but so many people because they're like in the early journey they're like asking and then i realized oh actually i have learned a lot maybe i should like put this in a thing. I just didn't think I was like an expert yet. You know, like I think we wait till we're an expert to do something. I'm like, you're not just like keep going. And those people that are like, you know, there's so many people ahead of you and there's always going to be people behind you. And if those people are asking for help, help them like teach, yeah. come back and teach. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that was wild. I'm like, what? <laughs> so are you starting to see yourself, Nicolina, as you're realizing that you do have a gift and you also enjoy helping other people teach you, can you start to see the core four business models that we teach coming to fruition in your life and using them, starting with affiliate marketing and then scaling to potentially doing courses, coaching and events yourself? That's like, literally, I'm like, that's what I was saying when I was like, where has this been my whole life? Oh my gosh. Like the core four is like pure brilliance. I'm like, oh my God. I love it. Um, and they're all highly profitable and you're doing it all in the same thing. I'm like, it's just brilliant. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm like, I'm starting with affiliate marketing right now. I'm building that out. And I think I wanted to take my time because I wanted to make sure I was hitting the right people and making sure I'm hitting the right problems with the right solutions. You know, I think we, we can assume a lot. Like we can assume, I know what they need. I know what they're struggling with. And it's like, well, actually I might not know. Like, yeah. and so to continually be teachable by your audience and by your, um, like niche, like you have to be teachable in every facet. Right. Um, and so, and just constantly learning and constantly like trying new things. Oh, that worked. That didn't, Oh, this worked, you know, like you have to, you have to give yourself to that in any business, but especially this one. Um, and so I can see, oh, I already have like 12 streams, like 12 things I want to do. And I'm like, hey, one bite at a time, like we're going to get there. Um, yeah, so that core four, freaking brilliant. I love it. I love it. I love that it's resonated with you and you've seen how it can be so easily or not. Maybe I should, shouldn't should use the word easily, but how it can be put together and it's a natural progression for selling and monetizing information, which is the simplest way to sell something. 
It is so much simpler than in inventing something, trying to sell a widget, a gadget, a lotion, potion, or a pill. Um, in the past, in order to be an entrepreneur, most of us had to invent something. We thought we, and then of course the 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 whole drop shipping fit, you know craze came along, and we were gonna you know we were gonna sell other people's products, and we realized oh crap you know. It's I can't make a profit from selling American-made products, so I I have to go to China and I'm going to sell these crappy you know <laughs> trinkets and ship them over. And many people did that for several years until the pandemic hit, and it was like oh shit, you know I can't even get my crappy junky trinkets from China to to wherever I got to go because the supply chains are all shut down. And I explain all of that right in the challenge, right on the first three days. I explain the challenges of the different business models and why we prefer to sell information. Not only is it simpler to enter any market, it's natural. It's also so natural for social media because in to sell on social media, because people are already consuming information on social media. So one way to know if somebody's going to buy a product is if they're already using a similar product, yeah. it's very difficult to change somebody's habits and so if I'm on, you know, if I'm selling toothpaste on social media, the first thing th somebody's going to say is, I wonder how it tastes. I, I, you know, how long will it take to get here? You know, I'm not, I wasn't even, I'm not brushing my teeth right now. I'm watching videos. But if you say, hey, um, you know, you come up on social media and you say, hey, I have a, a great way for you to learn how to um, uh, get your baby to sleep through the night. I've got a five part video series or a quick training video that will show you the three simple steps. And if you love that, I have a course you can take. Well, I'm already watching videos. That's a natural progression for the person to want to enter their email to get that free gift to then watch your training video or your training slash sales video and potentially enroll in a course or a course you're an affiliate for. It's just a beautiful, natural pro progression. And again, if, if you folks haven't, you know, if you're sitting on the sidelines, you haven't taken the challenge or you're, you haven't dove into our education, you still don't understand it. Then, you know, I really encourage you to, 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 to understand the concepts and the principles and the blueprint of why we love these core four business models so much. And Nicolina, I'm just so thrilled that you are having success, that you're that you're getting it, that it's changing your life. It makes my heart happy to hear how your heart and mind is also opening up in thinking and dreaming and being creative and also recognizing that you have all these wonderful, beautiful, powerful and profitable skills and potential right within you. Um, that that you know, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing you, you're not you're not you know uh, stricken with a poverty generational curse. That you actually can, as you as you've intended to do, break those generational kind of you know poverty sort of what seems like a curse. I've I've done the same thing. Um, and and uh, go after your dreams, go after your goals. You know, um, and and be successful with it. You you got this. You are you are truly a legendary marketer. Thank you for getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning to be with us. And, uh, you know, and I just so, so greatly appreciate your time. Please come back and see me again in the near future and keep us posted on your journey, would you? Yeah, no, seriously. Thank you. I say this all the time. I'm like, I feel like I don't even do the course justice. Like, it's not just affiliate marketing. And you're like, I don't even know how to explain it. Just take the course. I don't, I don't know how to explain it to you. Just go take it. Like, just trust me. So anyway, no, thank you. You're so welcome. You're Abby. so welcome. All right. Well, it was a pleasure. It was it was it was a powerful conversation. And we'll talk to you really soon. OK, thanks, Dave. All right. Bye bye. All right, my friends, you can follow Nicolina on Instagram at the wealthy underscore mama M A M A at the wealthy underscore mama. What a powerful conversation. I mean, you know, calling all the way in from Hawaii at four o'clock in the morning. Um, man, it just, it, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, my friends, I'll tell you what we're getting ready for here in legendary is a powerful mastermind that's happening here this weekend. We have people and they already start are starting to fly in, drive in, 
you know, train in trains, planes, automobiles, however the heck they got to get here into Orlando, Florida for a powerful weekend. Now, you probably have heard or heard somebody talk about, maybe it was your advisor, maybe it was somebody else, our mastermind, well, my friend, um, you, you may not have known how powerful these events are, but you are about to find out if you're going to be joining us. And we are going to try to share as much as we can in terms of little clips. I'm going to be going live from the Mansion Mastermind on Friday with everybody uh, in the room, and we're going to be streaming directly to you. So if you want to get a little bit of a taste of kind of what you know the room looks like and feels like there, then make sure to tune into that. But just as always, we'll be back here tomorrow for another episode leading up to that. And of course, um, next weekend, we'll also be in Orlando. We've got our uh, m most of our team flying in. We've got d damn near 200 people on our legendary marketer team who are serving our clients, who are advisors, customer service, marketing team, all the things. Uh, and guess what? All of our team, believe it or not, works virtually, works from home. If you can believe that or not, we're the 30th fastest as of um, Inc. Uh, or, or uh, uh, acknowledged or uh, um, uh, we are the Inc. 5000, I guess, magazine, Inc. 5000 magazines, 30th fastest growing education company in America, privately held. And not a single person reports to a dadgum classroom or a building, if you can believe that. We, 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 we do not even manage uh, any of our people. Uh, we really do not call them employees either. Um, they are uh, people who are attracted to being here. They're motivated and driven to work within, inside of this community and this organization. And um, many of those people, a large majority of those people are also coming into Orlando, Florida to have a, uh, a weekend or a week, uh, three, three days with us in Orlando, Florida, just to be able to spend time and to mastermind and to do all the things that you do when you get together, learn, grow, hear and share stories with each other, work on our uh, strategies, work on our connection uh, uh, you know, abilities and just also have fun. You know, part of this company, this organization, this community is also about learning to have fun. It's about making work fun. It's about living, not just, you know, talking about the dream, but living a nightmare, but actually living the dream, right? Um, even for those who work as um, sort of entrepreneurs inside of our organization, um, that means that you have an entrepreneurial spirit, but you like to work inside of a company. Um, you know, we have we have, uh, you know, incredible people in part of our mission is to, you know, experience happiness in the lifestyle that we are teaching our clients uh, ourselves. And we do that. You know, I'm 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 sitting right here in my home, uh, you know, streaming this every single morning. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I've been doing this for 13 years and I can, I, 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 I just, uh, I'm so thankful that I found it and I'm so thankful to be able to share it with others because these principles, these strategies, these business models that we teach the core four here are truly life changing. And people are really starting to pick up and realize that they really are the best business to be in, in 2023 and beyond. And so my friends, if you're new here, put your seatbelt on, it's going to be a wild ride. And if you're on your way to Orlando this weekend, put your seatbelt on. It's going to be a wild ride. All right, my friends, get out of here. I love you. We'll see you later. Be blessed. Be grateful. Stay legendary and have a fantastic day. Get out of here. Peace.